you know, unfortunately, uh, no matter how much you plan, uh, there's always a certain percentage of uncertainty that's going to occur in, in, in any SWAT mission. Uh, you, you can't take into account how people are going to react. And sometimes fate shines on us, sometimes it rains on us. You, you believe there's a good chance he knew you were coming? I do. I do. Um, you know, when we pulled into the complex, we had about 150, 200 meters to travel. We try to uh, travel that last distance to any target as quickly as we can to cut down on reaction time. Uh, when we pulled up before we could set the perimeter, uh, the suspect had already uh, made his way out the back door. Of and the you end. move in fast. We move in fast. We move in fast so we can set that containment out around the target. And uh, he had already breached that containment perimeter. We, 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 never, we never got a chance to set it. Um, and this is a little duplicative, but tell us what was found inside the apartment. Uh, the apartment seemed to be what we call a trap apartment. Uh, it's not a place where people live. It's a, it's a structure where people have rented to sell drugs. Uh, we found very little furniture in there. I think it was a couch and a TV. Uh, and we also found some two-way radios. Which leads you to suspect? Which leads us to suspect that there may have been lookouts stationed within the uh, apartment complex. So when the police do come into the complex, then certain people are alerted. And of course, we arrived in, in our SWAT uh, vehicle. Will you ask the GBI to investigate that? I think there's a lot of uh, conversation to be had with the Georgia Bureau of Investigation to, uh, uh, that's certainly one of the questions to, and obviously we want to know if there was any complicity in this. Um, when you heard what had happened to you, what happened to you? Well, that's news no one wants to hear. I don't care if you're an officer or if you're a chief. Uh, you never want to hear that uh, an officer has been shot. Uh, matter of fact, you don't want to even hear that a citizen's been shot. We're just trying to do our job. Tell us whether you knew Jerron Ross was in there. We did not. Had you seen him before? Had your people seen him? We had not. We had only one person identified, and it was not him. He was not one of the persons identified. Uh, what do you believe was going on inside that apartment? Uh, guys were setting up in his apartment selling drugs. They didn't actually live there, but they were set up in the middle of the day and just used his apartment just to sell drugs out of. What you found corroborated that? Yes, it did. You found how much furniture? There was a couch and just a television set up inside. The, the warrant was based in significant part on traffic stops of vehicles that had left there and had marijuana in them. Yes. Um, tell us, uh, first of all, about the checklist. That you were one of the people initially in the checklist. Yes. There's a checklist that we have to corroborate the address, the information that we receive, received, and the investigation that we've done a thorough investigation on this location where we're going. Most, do most SWAT teams even have this checklist? I'm not sure how other SWAT teams operate. It's something that we've put in place. Um, how long has it been, been in place? Uh, probably for the past two years. So tell us about going down each item on that checklist and how careful you are about that. Very careful. Very careful. I mean, for minor things for dogs, how many dogs, um, children, elderly, ages, um, just the various things that we have to make sure verify the address that we f physically see the address, just on not just on the warrant but on the building itself. When you heard gunshots, what happens inside you? Well, basically, you never want to hear gunshots, but uh, when you do hear that, it's like, oh God, please everybody be safe. Please be safe. You know that kind of feeling goes through and. Uh, then shortly after there, you're trying to find everybody and make sure they are safe. Working in this county as long as you have, you knew Greg Varney. Oh yes, oh yes. Yeah, we go way back, uh, did some stuff together as patrolmen. Uh, you on found the road. out he'd been shot. 
I couldn't believe it. Uh, didn't know uh, how he had actually uh, got in uh, because I didn't. And when I say got in, meaning uh, got in the, uh, the middle of the gunfire because I didn't know where he was and I was under the impression that uh, he was either at the top of the complex or far enough back where uh, he wouldn't even uh, have had contact with anyone. 